consideration of service agreement with EDAW Inc. for Mare Island Building Survey. Okay, the city issued a request for proposals to conduct a survey of buildings on Mare Island to determine their structural integrity and compliance with applicable codes and ordinances. Recommended improvements and estimated costs will also be included. 27 proposals were received in response to the request for proposals. City staff recommends EDAW, Inc. as the preferred consultant. The anticipated amount of this contract is $275,000 funded entirely by the Department of Defense Office of Economic Adjustment. This item requests approval for an initial expenditure of $50,000. All subsequent expenditures will also require council approval. The recommendation before us is to adopt the resolution adopt a resolution authorizing the city manager to execute a master service agreement with EDAW, Inc. to perform a building survey of selected buildings on Mare Island. There are a number of different speakers. I'm going to call the speakers in alphabetical order, and each speaker is limited to three minutes. There are, at this point, Ten speakers. However, I'm looking at the uh, folks getting up to add a few more. And I'll wait till I receive them. And I will receive no more once I've counted and announced how many I have. Okay, there are now 11 speakers. Is there anybody in the audience who thinks they might, thinks he or she might want to speak? If so, fill out a card. I'll now beginning, well, we'll first have a presentation by the staff. Um, Mr. De Silva, are you going to present? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, if I may. I'll just... Uh, Would you take some time to please explain the process that sure. you went through? Take your time to do it. I'd like a full disclosure of the process um, and how you came up with a recommendation that is before uh, us. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to do that, please, and uh, I would urge the and council to... we need the microphones turned up. I can barely hear what he's saying in front of me. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'd like to make a overview, a brief overview of the process to the City Council on this project. Uh, <clears throat> uh, late last year in December, the, your city staff proceeded to issue a request for proposals to secure the service of a professional team that would do a survey of all of the buildings at Mare Island for code compliance, health and safety items and standards. Uh, pursuant to your direction, we made sure that the, uh, this request for proposal had a comprehensive outreach program. In order to, and what we proceeded to do on, on that, Mr. Mayor, was to send direct solicitation to 128 firms. Uh, nine Vallejo firm, engineering firms were, were also contacted. 68 firms listed in the minority business directory of Northern California. Five local, uh, five local chamber of commerce, including minority. Advertisements in the Small Business Exchange. This is a publication that targets minority, women, and disabled veteran-owned firms, and the Vallejo Times Herald for three days. We received a number of um, proposals. Prior to that, we ensured that there was a tour of Mare Island. There was a pre-conference, well attended, in which we outlined the objectives of the city of Vallejo. We are recommending to you, <coughs> Mr. Mayor, that you um, authorize the city manager to retain the services of EDAW. Base, and the basis of the recommendation is the following. The professional credentials and track uh, was outstanding. EDAW and its team, if I may call the attention of the city council, was the same, the same team of professionals that did the final reuse plan, which was, I, uh, my impression, was well received by the City Council and certainly by Vallejo, uh, Vallejoans. 
And we also added, responding to your direction, inclusion of Vallejo businesses. The proposal or the team represented or headed by EDA, DESAV, Ocampo, ESTA, and Elliott Real Estate Firm, among others. One final observation that I think is noteworthy to the City Council. This is a phased contract. Currently, we have a permission or budget authority, if you will, from the Office of Economic Adjustment for $50,000. Nevertheless, we have contacted already OEA, the Office of Economic Adjustment, to provide us more money. We believe that the Office of Economic Adjustment will make funds available very quickly uh, to us. Ultimately, it is the goal of uh, your staff to survey all of those buildings at Mare Island. That in includes well over 400 buildings at our estimate. We are also fairly confident that OEA will provide the funds sufficient for this year to have over a million square feet of space uh, surveyed by us. So based on the above, Mr. Uh, Mayor, members of the Vallejo City Council, the recommendation from your staff is to retain the service of EDAL. I'll be happy to answer the questions that you may have on this matter. All right, I think uh, probably the council will hold the questions until I've heard from, the, from folks who wish to speak. And all of the speakers, as far as I can judge, are representing either one group or the other, either one, either EDAW or, or uh, Bowen Company. I don't see any that, uh, that or are speaking on behalf of one or the other. I'll call them in alphabetical order, which is the only way I can't be criticized, except for doing something that's dumb, but at least it's impartial. So I'll call the first speaker, Timothy Bow, Bow and Company Architects. Good evening. I'm Timothy Bow, Bow and Company Architects. We've been located in the historic arsenal in Benicia for 10 years. I uh, have already had the opportunity to say a mouthful in the letter that I have given to you, and I uh, would urge you to take a look at the questions that I raised. My intent was uh, to uh, stimulate discussion and try and get a very close look at this procedure, because what I've encountered in talking with uh, my friends in the community, people that we've worked with for years, uh, is that there's a lot of concern about the way the city is going to handle the uh, distribution of opportunities as they come available on Mare Island. The general community, and by that I mean uh, the 20 mile or so radius of people who live and work in this area, people that have their businesses located here, people who've made a commitment to this area on an ongoing and on a long-term basis, have been hurt by what's happening in Mare Island. My business has been hurt by what's happening in Mare Island. But we've stayed in the county. We have proven our commitment to this area. And I was at a marketing seminar one time, and I went to lunch with several representatives from very large architectural firms, 100-person-plus firms. And in the course of our discussion, they were telling me that their philosophy about procuring work is that is that part of something is, is better than all of nothing. And because they have a lot of mouths to feed and they need a steady flow of work, they prospect uh, in a large, in a very large area, unlike our firm, where 70% of our work is in this general vicinity. We concentrate on this area. If people ask us what our specialty is, we say, this is it, this is where we work. And we like that because we like to drive by our buildings, we like to know our clients, but Having that kind of a relationship holds us at a much higher level of accountability. And that's why I turned in a, a long list of, of uh, references, uh, very distinguished people in the community, and encouraged the panel to call them. And I have not been able to find a single one of my people who were called. So basically what we have here is a situation where we had a large firm that's already been enjoying the recovery and the benefits of Mare Island for the last year, and I'd like to add that I never saw that RFP when it went out either, nor did we see this one. We were not invited. We heard about it on the street. But on the day of the deadline, they turned in their proposal, and they didn't have a single firm on that proposal that was, on, that was east of the Carquinez Straits. They had a mechanical and electrical engineer in Hayward 
and that mechanical and electrical engineer is still on their team, even though they've added a second mechanical and electrical engineering firm from the city of Vallejo, which they substituted and put on the day of the interview. Now, how can we possibly compete when these businesses come into the community and they can shuffle their teams and make them look more like a local team? And I've heard some comments lately that, that really, uh, I have to tell you, I, I really resent. People have said that they view them as more local than us because they actually have some people on their team that reside, businesses that reside within the Vallejo city limits. Well, our team, 75% of them are within a 15-mile radius of, of uh, Bear Island. And we do, in fact, represent the community. And we feel that this is going to set a precedent. And I encourage, encourage you, and the business community is watching, to delve deeply into these issues and resolve them to the satisfaction of the people who do business in this area. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is Alan Brochure uh, of Whittier, or Whittler, Brochure and Associates. <clears throat> uh, good evening. My name is uh, Alan Brochier, uh, principal in Whittler, Brochier and Associates, um, the architectural uh, subconsultant for uh, EDAW. Uh, WBA, as our firm is referred to, uh, has been is an architectural planning firm basically doing uh, work for the Navy for about 20 years, uh, performing various design and planning services at various Navy installations, uh, including Mare Island. Now, we just completed a couple of projects at Mare Island in the last two years. Uh, we worked over there. We're familiar with extracting uh, documents from uh, the civil engineering uh, office, et cetera. Uh, WB, any questions afterwards? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next speaker is Don Brown of TIP Realty. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I'm here this evening representing Malcolm Tip. Uh, Malcolm is out of the city due to a tragic death of his three-year-old grandson in New York. And he's asked me to present these comments to you. Um, just that the opposes the staff recommendations to the EDOC as preferred consultant. Bowen Company Architects, the only local uh, proposer, has demonstrated its qualifications to perform the work as listed in the RFP through its expertise, dedication to the needs of the clients, plus its long and dedicated service and development in, to the Vallejo area to award this contract on to an out-of-area firm. Terry Cox, representing Cox Architectural Group. He'll be followed by Veronica Cushing. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, my name is Terry Cox. I'm a local architect in town. My business is at 1709 Sonoma. I've been in business since 19... 81. I've worked in Vallejo since 1972. I'd like to offer a few observations and a recommendation, if I may. Uh, first of all, I'm the longest established architectural office in town, and I did not receive an RFP. I heard about it also from uh, the street, so to speak. My, or my uh, structural engineer from Santa Rosa called me because he had received an RFP. Um, I went over and got the RFP, and then after evaluating it, decided the scope was probably too big for our firm. Uh, Fifty buildings in a short period of time to evaluate uh, was just too much. Therefore, I did not submit a proposal. I was asked shortly thereafter, since I did not submit a proposal, to serve on the review committee. So I found that that might be a, a good opportunity for me to see really what was going on with this project, to learn more about it, and to uh, help the city out. After reviewing 27 proposals from firms very well qualified to do 50 buildings in three or four months, uh, the committee meet, met to uh, select. Okay, there are now 11 speakers. Is there anybody in the audience who thinks they might 
thinks he or she might want to speak? If so, fill out a card. All right, I'll now beginning, well, we'll first have a presentation by the staff. Um, Mr. De Silva, are you going to present? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, if I may. I'll just... Uh, Would you take some time to please explain the process that sure. you went through? Take your time to do it. I'd like a full disclosure of the process um, and how you came up with a recommendation that is before uh, us. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to do that, please, and uh, I would urge the and council to... we need the to... microphones turned up. I can barely hear what he's saying in front of me. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'd like to make a overview, a brief overview of the process to the City Council on this project. Uh, <clears throat> uh, late last year in December, the, your city staff proceeded to issue a request for proposals to secure the service of a professional team that would do a survey of all of the buildings at Mare Island for code compliance, health and safety items and standards. Uh, pursuant to your direction, we made sure that the, uh, this request for proposal had a comprehensive outreach program. In order to, and what we proceeded to do on, on that, Mr. Mayor, was to send direct solicitation to 128 firms, uh, nine Vallejo firm. I think the best thing that you can do for this area and the economy in this area is to keep locals in this project. You've got the professionals that have got the ability to do it, and I'd like to see you do that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Donahue. Alan Folks of EDAW. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, um, good evening. It's indeed a pleasure to be here tonight. Um, we certainly are, are excited about coming back to work in, in Vallejo. Um, John Petrovsky wanted to be here tonight. I know you're all familiar with John. He gave presentations in front of this body before uh, concerning the reuse plan, uh, and he couldn't be here tonight, so I'm filling in for him. Um, we certainly have heard everything that's been said tonight. We, we come here uh, open and honest. Uh, we, we've done a lot of work. Uh, in the base planning business. That's, that's what we've made a living at recently. Uh, EDA has done a lot of military base master planning over the years, so we have a lot of DOD experience. Uh, the reason why we were very much interested in this contract and also the other one was quite simply because that's, that's what we do. Vic Freeman, followed by Tom Gavin. Mr. Mayor, uh, council members, my name is Vic Freeman. I live at 474 Panorama Drive in Benicia. I've known uh, Tim Bow and his organization for many years. Uh, they've done outstanding work. I'm very familiar with their buildings and the design, both in residential and, and industrial uh, commercial work. They've won numerous awards, and I know Tim personally. I know he's a man of integrity. I find it very interesting tonight I didn't realize this, but uh, when Mr. Cox mentioned that it, it, within the committee the vote was two plus two, now it's, it strikes me that if all things being equal, and I'm, both firms are, are very qualified, there's no question about that, however, if it's two to two, I think it sends a real message if the out of town gets the, the lead firm is out of town. When it's two to two by I didn't know this until tonight, but it struck me as very curious that if it's a, a tie vote, why shouldn't it be in favor of the local person, local firm? Now, I commend the city, and I've been told by various members of the city uh, staff that uh, you're encouraging local participation and, and giving every break to local people because we have the most impact. And uh, Freeman, Tom Gavin, followed by Jack Hussey. Mr. Mayor and Council Members, my name is Tom Gavin. I'm also from Benicia, and I agree a great deal with what uh, Mr. Freeman just had to say regarding the qualifications of Bowen Company. I've had the honor of doing business with Bowen Company for a number of years, and during that period of time, I've had the opportunity to see the... And Mr. Trustee will be followed by Russell Ocampo 
of Gocampo Este Corporation. Mr. Mayor, Council Members, my name is Jack Hussey, 1720 Broadway in Vallejo. And since I was on an earlier agenda and I hate to show up and not say anything, I thought I might discuss this a little bit. A lot of business people have been talking about this project in Vallejo. Uh, of course, we all want it to be done locally, and we now understand that probably EDA also is going to represent local people. We understand that money was not a question in this. Uh, I guess one of the problems some of us are having as we discuss the thing is the request for a proposal, and Mr. Cox brought that out, where we started at 50 buildings, and I understand we're down to five or six now, or spread out. Uh, that meant a number of people could not or thought they could not qualify. Uh, I like Mr. Cox's idea of maybe splitting this up to let uh, both sides show what they can do, and that's my only comment. Thank you. Thank you. Russell Ocampo, followed by Jerry Whitehead of Tower Engineering, and then the final speaker, Tom Wilson of Bow Architects. Hi, my name is uh, Russell Ocampo, and I represent Ocampo Esta Corporation. We're a local minority firm uh, located at 1419 uh, Tennessee Street. Uh, we're an engineering consulting firm, and we were approached by EDAL to be um, their local uh, participation uh, company. Uh, we were very enth enthusiastic in uh, submitting and um, uh, participating with this RFP. Um, our firm was established in 1986, um, and I've been here for about 20 years. The two principals, Oscar Ocampo and Dante Esta, has been here for about 20 years also. Uh, currently, we have 30 employees of which 80% reside in the city, in the city of Vallejo. We strongly advocate local business participation, and we have always tried to patronize and give preferences to local businesses here in Vallejo. Along with purchasing goods and, and services, we also give preferences of employment to local residents. Uh, as part of the EDAL team, I hope you will concur with the city staff's recommendation to allow EDAL's team to execute the, the Mare Island Building Survey. I am sure that the local community would commend your effort to allowing the active participation of our local minority firm. Thank you. Thank you. Jerry Whitehead of Tower Engineering. Mayor, Council, thank you for the opportunity to speak. Um, we've known Bowen Company. Uh, since the early 19 or late 1980s, uh, they gave us some of our first jobs when we got started during the recession. So we've had a long, ongoing relationship, including many jobs uh, in the Vallejo and the uh, Solano areas, your health center, the Blue Rock Country Clubs, the Vallejo Corporate Center, uh, post office, Walgreens. And at this time, the council will uh, de deliberate on the matter. This reminds me very much of a matter that was before us not too many years ago when we had the great debate a couple of years ago on whether a San Rafael firm was local or a Contra Costa firm. And um, I think at that point we had, because they had an office here of something of that sort. But in any event, we've been through this before in terms of decide, trying to become uh, Solomons and, uh, and uh, trying to figure out uh, who is local and who isn't local and, and all of that. When it comes down to it, it's what's the, what can do the best job. I want to ask a few questions um, of the um, staff um, that come up in connection with the things that have been mentioned. Um, first of all, I want to point out in your, um, in your report to us, you outline your process by which you submitted the request for proposals. And I want the public to know this. On December 5th, the city issued a request for proposals to conduct the Mare Island Building Survey. City staff uh, conducted an extensive outreach effort to, con uh, to consulting firms uh, in, con in, um, uh, in submission to the requests or in, in accordance with the request from the council. Direct solicitation to our mailing list of 128 firms. Nine Vallejo engineering firms were added after a telephone directory search. 68 firms listed in the minority business directory of Northern California were, were uh, contacted. Additionally, we contacted five local chambers of commerce, including the Hispanic, Korean, Black, and Filipino chambers. There was advertisement placed in the Small Business Exchange targeting disadvantaged business enterprises, minority-owned, women-owned, and disabled veteran-owned firms. 
and advertisements were placed in the Vallejo Times Herald for three days. On December 12th, 104 representatives of 85 firms attended a briefing and tour of Mare Island, including interior visits to three buildings. On December 23rd, 27 proposals were submitted for consideration. In an effort to achieve a cross-section of opinion, a selection panel was assembled, which was composed of both city staff and community members. On, this, on that panel were Gil Hollingsworth, the program manager for the Mare Island Conversion Division, City of Vallejo, Howard Siegel, administrative analyst, the Mare Island Division, Terry Cox, local architect, and Malcolm Maher, local general contractor, Chamber of Commerce representative. The criteria utilized in the decision-making process were as follows. Experience of firm, 30%. Approach to scope of work, 30%. Proposed cost, 20%. Proposed personnel, 10%. And other considerations, 10%. On January 10th, the, the panel selected the following nine teams for interviews. Interactive Resources was one. LPA Inc., a second. A.J. Moore and Associates, a third. Fourth, Winsler and Kelly, five, Bowen Company, six, Marks Akubo and Associates, seven, Edaw Inc., eight, Carey and Company, nine, McGraw-Baldwin Architects. On January 13th, these nine firms were all interviewed. The panel's decision was narrowed to two firms, Bowen Company and Edaw. City staff has recommended Edaw Inc. as the preferred consultant for the following stated reasons. The Edaw team has superior experience in this type of work as well as with Mare Island. This is in the opinion of city staff. Edor was the prime contractor who helped to develop the Mare Island final reuse, reuse plan and is currently developing the reuse plan and building survey for Alameda Naval Air Station. Their approach to collecting and presenting data, especially in electronic form, was superior and would enable the city to use this data in a property management and marketing system. A significant number of minority-owned and Vallejo-based business firms are included in the EDAW team, including Elliott Realty, Ocampo Esta Corporation, and Applied Pest Management, Inc. The fiscal impact. This survey is being funded entirely by a grant from the Office of Economic Adjustment. However, due to uncertainties regarding the amount of funding, city staff is proposing the use of a master service agreement subject to incremental work orders for specified amounts and tasks. Although OEA, the Office of Economic Adjustment, has only committed 50000 thus far for this project, they've agreed to increase funding based upon the results of the pre-approved RFP process. City staff recommends that the initial work order for 50000 be issued concurrent with the execution of the service agreement. Staff further proposes to seek council approval prior to the issuance of any subsequent work orders over $25,000 under this agreement contingent upon receipt of additional funding. I raise these issues because I think they're relevant in terms of the discussion of numbers of building, whether there's five at this point, 10 or all 50. Uh, we're talking about a master service agreement calling down the, down the service as the funds become available from the Office of Economic Adjustment. Right now they are quite limited. The, um, the question, the last question I have, and I, I need uh, to have this from you, um, uh, Mr. De Silva, is that in your report to us, you indicate the um, recommendation is uh, between the two firms of a, is a vetoing for the stated reasons, but there is not indication of a divided vote. I would like to hear the, the rationale for the decision to go with Edo Inc. I'm not criticizing it, I'm questioning based upon what we've heard, who broke the tie, or how was there a tie broken, and what was the basis for the break in the tie? <coughs> Mr. Mayor, in fact, uh, what's been reported to you is correct. The panel, was, which was at four members, really divided. They had two for one and two for the other. It's, I think, important to bring out what is the role of that committee. That committee is really sort of advisory to staff. It's to provide staff with uh, input, local input. We made, as I think you pointed out, an unprecedented movement by incorporated people from the Chamber of Commerce and the local market. Yes. Uh, we made, I think, an unprecedented move by inviting people from the Chamber of Commerce as well as from uh, the local architect groups to provide us input. That recommendation came to, in fact, the department had me and the city manager to decide. And we looked as we do in many other committees that some of them, like 
personnel committees that we hire, that we convene to provide input to staff, we review those recommendations and primarily for the reasons that we stated in staff report, Mr. Mayor, which is that the track record of the company was excellent, proven track experience in the development of the final reuse plan, uh, currently doing work for Alameda on, on building surveys. But one of the things that was heavy on my mind was the participation of Vallejo companies in the proposal explicitly. And while that was done at the interview, clearly this proposal had at that time more of a Vallejo-based company than anybody else. So those were the reasons why we decided that this was a recommendation worthy to present to you, Mr. Mayor. So the, the, the recommendation is the recommendation uh, of the department head yourself That's and right. the city manager based upon the results of the interview process. That's right. As you see them. Yes, I see it. All right. Thank you. Mr. Patch. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to ask staff a couple of questions here. Uh, did you do a, um, did you do a, an RFP orientation with all the firms that were interested? Um, Mr. Patchell, yes, we did. I believe the uh, tour of December 12th, meeting with 104 companies and representing. Bowen Company and EDOB both attended that? I'm not sure we know the answer to that. I'm not sure we kept a record of who came and who didn't come. I'd like to know that. It's very important to me to know yeah. if EDA came there and if Bo came there. That shows interest. I'd like to know that. Right now, I'd like to know it right now. Well, we could ask the principals. Yeah. Um, what I'd like to know. Mr. Uh, Bo, uh, could you come forward and indicate whether you attended and Mr. Uh, who would represent the other party? Representing EDA? Yes. We have... Uh, we were in attendance, and uh, I'm, I'm glad that uh, Council Member Patchell brought that up. I didn't know if it was appropriate for us to mention it. We scoured the list of firms that signed, signed in, and unless they're writing in a different language, EDA is not on here. Now, I'd like to ask the question to EDA. Why didn't they show up for that? All right, that's a fair question. Um, a tour. They've probably been on a thousand tours, but the Mayor Island given the work they did with the reuse plan, but that to might me, be... it's very important. Yeah, go ahead. Let me say first that uh, our team members, Alan Brochet and some of the other folks were there. John and I were not because we've been given that tour many times and feel that we know the base pretty well. So that particular day we did not attend, but our architect and engineers attended. That day? Yes. Okay. On that day. So you did attend then? Yes. Another question I'd like to ask. Do you got something else, Gil, you want to give me? Some, some uh, no, we were going through the records, and we did find, in fact, that there were mem members of that team, of EDOT team, that did come for that uh, pre-conference. What percent of the $275,000, that's the maximum that's going to be awarded for this project? No, that is Estimated? Our, that's estimate for the current year. I think it's fair to tell you that by the time we do the entire 500 buildings, this contract, it, it will go well over a million dollars. Um, but as again, as w I think the mayor pr uh, presented and as I tried to do earlier, we will make this money available as quickly as we receive from the Office of Economic Adjustment. We believe that by the end of this calendar year, we will have as much as $255,000. And but our architect, and engineers attended that day yes okay. on that day so you did attend then yes okay. uh, another question I, i'd like to ask you, you got something else Gil, you want to give me some, some uh, no we were going through the records and we did find in fact that there were mem members of that team of edot team that did come for that uh, pre-conference what percent of the $275,000, that's the maximum that's going to be awarded for this project? No, that is estimated. Our, that's estimate for the current year. I think it's fair to tell you that by the time we do the entire 500 buildings, this contract, it, it will go well over a million dollars. Um, but as again, as w I think the mayor pr uh, presented and as I tried to do earlier, 
we will make this money available as quickly as we receive from the Office of Economic Adjustment. We believe that by the end of this calendar year, we will have as much as $255,000, which represents about a million square feet uh, to be inspected, surveyed. But in the uh, end, it will be one million we in, expended. By the end of this calendar year, we hope to have a lot more money than that. We, we think that we... The five on the shot clock. Here's Sweet. Kicks it off. Kaiser's going to have the trigger. Forces up a shot, and it hits the uh, rim and the uh, backboard. Ball loose on the floor, and finally controlled by UMass. And there you go, they became stagnant, standing around again. Okay, we'll, we will reconvene. All right, we're on item um, 13C. Consideration of service agreement with EDOT, Inc. for Mare Island Building <coughs> Survey. The city has issued a request for proposals uh, to conduct a survey of buildings on Mare Island in order to determine their structural integrity and compliance with applicable, applicable codes and ordinances. This is all, of course, to facilitate the reuse of the property. Recommended improvements and estimated costs will also be included in the survey. 27 proposals were received in response to the RFP. City staff recommends EDAW, Inc. as the preferred consultant. The anticipated amount of this contract is $275,000 funded entirely by the Department of Defense Office of Economic Adjustment. This item requests approval for an initial expenditure of $50,000. All subsequent expenditures will also require council approval. On January 31st, council directed staff to initiate efforts to include Bow and, Com Bo and Company on the EDAW team. Since that time, representatives of both firms have attempted to reach such an agreement. City staff has been informed that the firms were unable to reach a mutually satisfactory agreement, and the recommendation before us is to adopt the resolution authorizing the city manager to execute a master lease uh, service, or excuse me, a master service agreement with EDAW Inc. to perform a building survey of selected buildings on Mare Island. By agreement of the parties, yes. I, I terribly apologize. Yes. Uh, I believe, and I'm looking to the back, uh, is Mr. Bo, can he wave his hand, the lights are, uh, did you say that you were going to go first? I said I'd do either one. And EDAW said? I want to go second. Excuse me, then it is, it is uh, Bo for first and EDAW second. All right. In that case, uh, by agreement of the parties, which you've just heard, uh, the Bo group will go first, the EDAW group will go second, the Bow Group um, uh, will be headed off, I think, by Tim Bow. And if there is a desire to rearrange the presentation uh, in a manner other than I call the cards, since I've begin give, been given a group of cards by the Bow Group, uh, please let me know. At the moment, I have them arranged in alphabetical order. The uh, first speaker would have been Jeff Bow, but I, he gave me his card after Timothy. So does Tim wish to speak first or Jeff? Good evening. I'm Timothy Bow, and my business address is 940 Tyler Street, Suite 23 in Benicia, and I'm the president of Bow & Company Architects. Um, I, I'd like to start off by saying that right now you may be thinking that we're doing a lot of extra work on the awarding of a contract that staff has, has recommended someone else, but uh, I would like to take the viewpoint that there's a lot of good ground that, that's being broken here. We're, 
raising some issues that I think are going to be very beneficial to the city in the long run in the terms of doing future RFPs. And I know that it's the resolve of the city council to really involve the local community and make sure that as much of the income that's generated from the Mare Island reuse stay in the general community. And uh, I really believe that we're taking uh, a step in that direction, uh, regardless of what the decisions made with regard to this particular contract. I uh, would like to uh, start off by my presentation by reading a couple sections out of the Mare Island Final Reuse Plan that was prepared, uh, ironically, by EDA, the, the firm that we're going against tonight. On, on page uh, E89, it says, the Mare Island Naval Shipyard will close April 1st, 1996. For much of the past 50 years, the shipyard has been the largest employer in Solano and Napa counties. And then down in the third paragraph, it said, the loss of the region's largest employer would be a significant trauma for the entire community. The region, parentheses, Solano and Napa counties, will be especially hard hit. On page E93, it says, the closure of the 139-year-old shipyard in April 1996 will have a devastating short-term impact on the region's economy. It says, Solano County is home to over 74% of all civilian employees at the shipyard, and the development of new jobs and new businesses to replace the positions and revenue lost to the closure is critical to the region's economy. Residents can expect their standard of living to decline well into the next century. Well, I have some news for EDA and, and the firms from San Francisco that have been out there working for the last year and enjoying the benefits of the reuse. The local businesses have been feeling that for some time. And that's why um, I was not willing to accept the offer to take a position on their team. As a, as a way of resolving this particular issue. We have put together a team of qualified local professionals. 90% of, of the income that we would derive from this project would go to firms that reside within a 15-mile radius east of the Carquinas Straits. We're all qualified to do the work. There's no way we would have gotten into the final interviews if we weren't. It came down to a tie vote, and I have a lot of reason to believe that we needed three votes going into that. And I'd love to get into those in the question and answer period, but I'd like to just lead into what I said in my presentation, because EDA has an established relationship with staff. They've been working together for the last year, and it's worth mentioning that for the last year, they haven't had any local firms on their team. They've been out there working with an architect from Oakland and structural engineer from Walnut Creek, they haven't demonstrated any desire in the last year to involve the local community and help, th and help them to participate in the benefits of the reuse on Mare Island. Nor did they express that desire on the day when they responded to the RFP on the 23rd of December. I have a copy of the exhibits that they submitted, and it was the same team that they've been working with on Mare Island. They didn't include any local participation. I also have a, a copy of a local engineering firm, Ocapa Esta, that was date stamped as having been received by EDA nine days prior to the time when they submitted that data, their submittal. And Ocampa Esta was not a part of their team. They were added on the day of the interview on de January 13th after they somehow realized that they better get some local participation or there was no way they were going to be awarded the next phase of the contract. As I said going in, I knew that we were going to have to offer something different than what the other teams were, because I can't say we've been out there working for a year, although I've got a problem with that. I think we should have been. What I told the city, what I told the staff, I should say, is that we're talking about a region where we already do our work. We're, we're a local firm, Solano and Napa County. That's, that's our client base. That's who we market to. That's who we, that's, these are the projects that we do. More than 70% of our projects are in this area. And I recognize that Mare Island has great potential for a firm like ours. A firm like Bowen Company and the team that we've assembled can really go on the long term and, and, and make a major commitment to that area and stick with the entire reuse process on Mare Island. And we offered to do that. We said we'd put a branch office on the island we would have a registered architect on the premises. We would 
provide an office for the marketing people to bring potential users. We would go through on the walkthroughs of the buildings and show them in, in ways that only an architect can, the real potential and the real uses for those buildings. We would make that commitment to the city to do that. As the work on the island began to increase, we had not ruled out the possibility of relocating the entire firm and becoming a Vallejo firm. Mr. I wouldn't Rall, have a Mr. Rall, I'm, I'm terribly sorry to have to interrupt you, but you're beyond your time limit, as you know, and we need to call the other speakers. So, And I'm going to do, deal the same way with all of the other speakers. Okay, Mayor, I, I had a misunderstanding in my conversation with, with Mr. Graham. I was led to believe that we had about 20 minutes and that we could divvy up that time any way we wanted. I, I was not told that. I've been yeah. handling it the same way I always have, three minutes for each person. Mr. Graham, I, did you I did, uh, Mr. Mayor, say that he had 20 minutes uh, based upon, I said, six, if six people speak, then uh, it's three minutes per person. So if he's saying that some of his group will defer speaking on his behalf, and I apologize. Well, yeah, they have about ten speakers in. So there may be then half of well, those. Well, let me count. Let committed. me count. Are you deducting this time? Or should I keep speaking? So far, it's already over. Huh? Okay. Uh, There's nine speakers. Okay. Let me take 30 seconds to summarize. And I'm limiting the other speakers to three minutes apiece. Is that correct? That'd be fine. This is the client. And I want to clarify the percentage of involvement so that everyone is real clear on that. In the initial assignment, which is about a $50,000 to $50, assignment, EDA's role would be about 20% of that. Whitler Brochet, our lead architect, would be 35%. Ocampo Esta Corporation, our local firm, would be 20%. And Bill Elliott, who will work on the real estate appraisal side, would be about 5%. Moffat and Nickel, about 15%. And our minority engineer that has worked with us on the Alameda work and really understands the nature of this work, YEI, would be 5%. That totals 100%. That's um, fine. And then come back up. Thank you. Alan Folks, uh, project manager for you. Uh, Mr. Mayor, council members, good evening. Um, I just have three points and I'll be very brief. Uh, one is, uh, again, just to kind of remind you of all that, that this is a planning contract and, and not an architectural contract, as was stated in uh, Mr. Bowe's letter. Uh, we clearly have done this work on numerous assignments and this is where we're, we're coming from. This is what EDAL has a base in and as David just said, uh, we've done as a firm many base reuse projects and this is the kind of work that, that we pursue. We fully believe that there's going to be lots of tenant improvement work out here in the future. Uh, most of these buildings are going to require building upgrades uh, as we'll probably get into later and we can tell you that. Um, Certainly, it's going to be a need to hire local contractors to go in there and work and actually do the physical upgrading of those buildings. Uh, that's not what we're proposing, and it's not part of this contract. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is Alan Brochier, and he'll be followed by Oscar Ocampo. <clears throat> Good evening, uh, Mr. Mayor and uh, City Council members. My name is Alan Brochier. I'm principal of uh, Whitler Brochier & Associates. I reside at uh, 21 Steuben Bay, Alameda. <clears throat> Our office is in Oakland, California. Uh, not to uh, belabor what I've spoken in the past, um, the, the nature of this contract is not about architectural design. We're not here designing buildings. We're not <clears throat> creating projects that end up in construction or win architectural awards. Um, our purpose is basically to collect data it's to uh, perform code and seismic analysis, which will provide the city of Vallejo the data and information necessary to determine the disposition of four to 500 structures at Mayor Island. Um, whether the building gets demolished, whether a building <clears throat> is mothballed for future use, whether a building has historical relevance uh, for future uh, historical renovation work. Now this is the issue, this is the bulk of our work, is not doing architectural design projects. Uh, there will be hundreds of architectural design projects in the future. I'm sure these will go to local architects. These will be advertised 
locally, and it'd be uh, a great opportunity for architects like Mr. Bow and Ms. Mr. Cox to uh, be awarded some of these future uh, contracts. We currently have a very good rapport with uh, Leon McNeil, your uh, chief billing official, and also uh, Robert Kinney, your fire marshal. We met with these gentlemen. Uh, we understand the scope of the work and the level of detail required to complete our work. And we feel we have a very positive working relationship uh, with these two individuals. <clears throat> and one important item, uh, it goes back to whether one or two teams ought to be doing this job, is continuity of the product. It's very, very important that one team does the work. So there's continuity and in code interpretations in professional judgments, in assessments of these structures. <clears throat> it's very, very critical. Uh, myself, with Larry Larson, along with uh, Leon McNeil and Bob Kinney, your uh, billing department and fire staff, will become the nucleus to make these um, interpretations and judgments uh, from a code analysis standpoint. Ocampa ESTA is providing a vital role as a Vallejo firm. <clears throat> they actually be doing a, a greater part of the work than originally thought. They'll be doing uh, performing data retrieval at Mirror Island, uh, preparing CAD drawings of all the buildings, providing electrical and mechanical surveys, providing cost estimating, <clears throat> and their office will become the base of operations for our whole team, being only a few blocks from uh, Mirror Island. Just a last response to the accusation that uh, my firm or myself prepared the proposal. Uh, that is not the case. Uh, we wrote about a third to maybe a half of the proposal, maybe five to six pages. And uh, John Petrovsky um, wrote the rest of the proposal. Thank you very much, sir. Thanks. Um, Oscar Ocampo, and he'll be followed by Juanito Jamias. Uh, good evening. Mayor Intentuli, city members. My name is Oscar Ocampo, president of Ocampo Esta Corporation. I live in uh, 1474 Legend Circle, Vallejo. Our office, Ocampo Esta, was established in 1986. We are a Vallejo uh, local company. We are also a certified minority company and uh, as a profession, I am a registered electrical engineer for the state of California and Nevada and 30 years experience as electrical engineer. My partner Dante Esta is also an electrical engineer and he has been in the city for 30 years. Ocampo Esta is a multidiscipline engineering firm we have licensed structural engineer, licensed civil engineer, licensed mechanical engineer, licensed electrical engineer, and we have this CAD system in our office wherein we have at least 12 CAD stations. The company was nominated for two consecutive years as the company minority of the year for 1992 and 1993. Our people on the CAD departments are all highly trained and experienced personnel. In 1994, our payroll includes 74 employees. 58 of these employees are Vallejo residents, and 15% of these employee resides within the 15-mile uh, uh, radius. Ocampo Esta deals businesses with the following company in the Vallejo area. All our banking is done with the Wells Fargo Bank in Tennessee Street. Any real estate dealings, we deal with Elliott Realty and the Realty World. All our office supply, we bought this from the Vallejo stationaries. Our bookkeeping is done by a local company, Lee Bookkeeping Office in Springstar Road and all our insurances is handled by a local company here, the All State under Mr. Levy. This team, the EDO team, in my personal opinion, 
has the experience, the qualification, and track records in performing this job at this contract as it calls for. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ocampo. Next speaker again, Juanito Jamias, um, followed by Bill Elliott. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, uh, council members. My name is Juanito Jamias. I am representing uh, Moffat and Nickel Engineers as part of the EDA team. At the same time, I'm, I'm representing myself as a resident of Vallejo for 13 years. I reside at 101 Anchor Court at Glencoe. Uh, we've had this uh, experience of doing this type of work. I want to em emphasize again what the, what the, the other team members have said before, but I want to say it again that right now we have just completed Alameda work, and and I would like to say that as a native, or I would say a 13-year resident of Baleo, I I firmly believe that to further develop this Mare Island, uh, we have the best team. Thank you. Thank you. Bill Elliott, followed by Dante Esta. I'm Mr. Mayor, members of the Council, Bill Elliott, 1600 Tennessee Street. I'm here this evening to try to support the Tennessee Street merchants and Tennessee Street business. Uh, I'm most familiar with Oscar and his engineering firm. We've done business. We're neighbors. Uh, I was pleased, to, my brother and I were pleased to be asked to be part of this team. Uh, we were lucky enough to be asked by a number of people. I know that it was important to have local participation, and our name showed up on, on uh, a number of the uh, submittals. But it's important <clears throat> that there be some local participation. I watch Oscar's crew most days in their basketball game at the end of the day. Uh, I know that he has the ability, or his firm has the ability to provide the product the city needs. I believe our office does also, and I would encourage you to uh, support uh, the eat out proposal. Thank you. Thank you. Dante Esta, followed by Rick Sitchar. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and uh, members of the City Council. Uh, I know it's uh, very difficult to put a smile on anybody's face uh, at this point. However, I'd like to greet you. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> <laughs> you got any yeah. cookies, candy, or anything like that? Yeah. My name is Dante Esta, and I'm uh, Vice President of Compi Esta Corporation. Uh, I'm just here to erase the impression that Ocampo Esta is not qualified to perform commercial and industrial related engineering work. I happen to represent the part <clears throat> in our company. For the past 10 years, Ocampo Esta has established a track record in commercial and industrial engineering, such as two years ago, you know, we had a joint effort with CH2M Hill. Uh, we helped in the successful completion of the Oceanside sewage treatment plant. And, and today, we are on the verge of completing the city's Bayside Sewage Treatment Facility. In 1991, Ocampo Esta was selected as one of the 10 from, from uh, applicants of 78 uh, firms uh, who were chosen uh, to provide engineer, engineering and management services to AT&T in the western uh, uh, states area. Uh, today, there are 22 AT&T building sites that we have engineered and are presently under construction in California, Nevada, and Oregon. Again, this year we expect to match or improve that work uh, with AT&T. Allow me to clear up the illusion that either is merely using Ocampo Esta to fulfill the local representation requirement for this project. 
IRA was the only outfit who took us seriously and responded well to our courtesy calls. One day before the interview, the principal and his team visited our office where all parties mutually exchanged interviews. I would like to strongly suggest that Ocampesta found in this IRA team the qualifications and expertise to keep this work in the right direction, and that IRA found in Ocampesta the necessary background and experience in, to carry out this project effectively. In closing, I would like to share you our business experience here in Vallejo. Ever since we founded this company, we've been trying to procure work locally, especially at Mirror Island. Today, we are still trying. Before the recession, we have sent deserving kids to Solano Community College to train on CAP. We have donated our engineering services for the Southern Solano Heliport, and it was quite an honor. Mr. Esta, perhaps you could give that list to some another member of the team, because Thank I you. have to interrupt you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, the next speaker is Rick uh, Sitjar, followed by Frank Aquino. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and Councilman. My name is Ricardo Sitar. I reside at uh, 173 Newcastle Drive, Vallejo, California. I'm a civil structural engineer of Campo Esta. I've been a licensed uh, civil structural engineer in California since 1976. And right now, uh, I'm busy helping them in doing all the retrofit work on AT&T and all other projects. And also, I'm the president of the Filipino American Society of Architects and Engineers here in the Bay Area. And also, I'm a member of the Sismology Committee of the Structural Engineer Association of Northern California, in which we handle projects that require retrofitting and a seismic upgrade. I think the EDAO team, and including Campo Esta, is the most qualified team that will do the, the project if not the best team, but the D team that can do and deliver what uh, the city of uh, Vallejo needs for Mare Island's upgrading. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Frank Aquino, followed by Amy Tressler. City Mayor, um, members of the City Council, good evening. Uh, my name is Frank Aquino. I live in uh, 340 Grenadine Way, Hercules. I'm here tonight to, uh, to speak in behalf and in support of Ocampo Esta. Um, Ocampo Esta, when I was at Pac Bell as a project manager, they had done work for me. And they had done such a quality work, good job, and I would recommend them to anyone that would be looking for some more work. Uh, they do have uh, lots of personnel that can do quality work and their approach is basically a proactive to clients' needs. Thank you. Amy Tressler, followed by Frank Levy. Good evening, Mayor and members of the Council. I am Amy Tressler, uh, working as a realtor in Vallejo, 1433 Springs Road. I have represented Ocampo Esta engineers a number of times over the past years. I have always found them to be fair and honest in all their dealings. I have also represented a number of their employees, and from these relationships, I offer the following observations. Ocampo Esta employs approximately 58 individuals from our area. They have seen the normal business cycles of booming and slow workloads, however, they have always done everything possible to retain employees even though work was slow. They have made a real contribution to Vallejo and brought stable employment to its residents. My husband, Michael Tressler, couldn't be here tonight because he's out of town on business. But he asked me to provide his input on Ocampo Esta, Ocampo Esta's competency and ethics. He recently retired from a local utility where he was the manager of the nuclear engineering department. He and others in the company have contracted with Ocampo Esta for both engineering services and personnel for a number of years 
and the timeliness and quality of work was outstanding. More importantly, they always place great value on meeting the intent of the contracts, not just the specific conditions, and all work and relationships were conducted to the highest of ethical standards. Thank you for providing me this opportunity to speak to you. Thank you. Frank Levy, followed by Dom Moran. Good evening, Mayor and uh, Councilman. My name is Frank Levy. I'm an active member of the Lions Club in Vallejo, also uh, Philippine American Chamber of Commerce, and also the choir in St. Basil Church. The only thing I can say is I've been uh, doing business with the Ocampo since 1986. Without failure, they always call me because I'm from the local. My office is down in Admiral Callahan Lane, near Safeway. And I live in uh, Glen Cove. I've been a resident of Vallejo for the last 14 years. I can say that uh, they can be trusted, they're honest, and the dealings I do with them is really very good, and I'm happy. Thank you. Thank you. Don Moran, followed by Charlie Beringer. Uh, good evening, uh, Mayor and Gentoli, and members of the City Council and staff. Uh, my name is Don Moran, President of the Filipino American Retired Jewish Armed Forces Association. My presence here tonight is just to voice my opinion about the awarding of the contract for the uh, conversion project in Mare Island. Uh, all I can say is my concern about the, as a whole, as a result of this project, what benefit does Vallejo get? Okay. Now, if one of the criteria of your or making decision in awarding the contract is whether the contract is the contractor is from Vallejo. So you give a preference so that the Vallejoans can get a benefit out of it. So I can only say that the uh, uh, Ocampo and Esta uh, engineering company is a, uh, a qualified and they have wide experience in engineering contract. They've been doing business for several years now. So uh, I'm pretty sure that they can do a, uh, a good job and they can be trusted. They are, uh, they've been uh, involved in helping the community. So if you award a contract, to Ocampo and Estas, they will hire people in Vallejo and it will help the community. So I would like to urge each and every one of the city council to vote to award the contract to Edao and Ocampo and Esta. And thank you very much. The next speaker then is Rosanna Verderliga. She'll be followed by Maria Batagon. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and members of the City Council. My name is Rosanna Verder Aliga. I'm a resident of Vallejo. I live on uh, 451 Brunswick Drive, Vallejo, California. I'm an active community leader as well as an elected official in the city of Vallejo and a community organizer. I am here to lend support to EDAL's proposal in partnership with Ocampo Esta for the Mare Island Building Survey Project. EDAL Incorporated a San Francisco-based company has contracted Ocampo Esta Corporation, a Vallejo engineering consulting firm, to be a part of their team. Ocampo Esta Corporation is a minority business in Vallejo with majority of its employees living and buying goods in Vallejo. They have done work for several firms such as PG&E, AT&T, Pacific Bell, Bechtel, the County of Solano, and others. Ocampo Esta Corporation has also been in this community for nine years, and their owners, Mr. Oscar Ocampo and Dante Esta, are longtime residents of Vallejo. 
They have supported numerous community projects, and to name a few, the Filipino Youth Internship Project, basketball tournaments for our Vallejo youth, and several youth conferences and out-of-town trips. They are active members of the Vallejo Chamber of Commerce and the Filipino American Chamber of Commerce. They are an outstanding minority firm who has extended help and support to many community projects and individuals. They truly have given back a lot to this community. EDOS proposal in partnership with the Campo Esta Corporation was reviewed and recommended by your staff and because they have met the criteria and requirements for selection. The EDOT team has experience and has the qualified staff to do the job. They have gone through the competitive bidding process and they truly deserve your final approval. I ask that you award this project to the EDAW team and happy Valentine too. Thank you. Thank you. Maria Batagon. Mayor Tony Tintoli, Vice Mayor Foster Hicks, members of the City Council and Vallejo, Vallejo City staff. My name is Maria Bitagon. I reside at 821 Falcon Drive. I have been a resident of Vallejo for over 30 years. I am a community leader and community organizer and a retired mechanical engineering technician from Mare Island. I have known Dante Esta and, and Dante, Dante Esta and Oscar Ocampo for the last 20 years. They have always contributed to the betterment of the youth, of the community at large. They have supported local businesses for as long as I can remember. I am here to support the decision made by the Vallejo City senior staff to grant the contract to Idao and Ocampo Esta as well as Elliott Realty. I feel very happy that the city have given an opportunity to Ocampo Este Engineering, which is a highly qualified minority business and also a local business. I feel that the award is very justified because of the proven track record of Idao and the excellent services that Ocampo Esta and Elliott Realty has to offer. I invite those who have questions to visit the facilities of Ocampo and Esta and meet the experienced people who work for them. I wish that the people won't make rush judgment about people's qualification without checking their sources. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak in behalf of Bidao and Ocampo and Esta, as well as Elliot Realty. Thank you. The, um, that uh, concludes the speakers that are on the list of people uh, that were given to me as members of the team. However, I do have a card from a, a person who indicates that they are a Vallejo resident and citizen and, and is speaking for the, um, uh, for the award of the contract to EDAW, so I'm calling them as the last, this person as the last speaker on that side of the issue. And that's Val Flores. Mr. Mayor, uh, council members, staff. I'd like to read first of all the, uh, the City of Vallejo mission statement. And I don't even know if the other group has ever heard of the mission statement here in Vallejo. And I'm sure all you're familiar with it, but I, I want you to hear it. The City of Vallejo mission statement celebrates its cultural and ethnic diversity, preserves its history and maritime heritage, cares for its children and their future, and provides cost-effective services second to none. There's no doubt that it takes qualified and experienced organizations to, um, to tackle the task of this project. No doubt both of these agencies fit this bill. I'm quite disturbed, though, that some of the opponents of this resolution have painted a picture that is quite inaccurate. The EDA team is highly committed to this community in more ways than the criterion set on this proposal. You know, today's Valentine's Day, we have that word commitment, right? And there are a lot of more intangibles that are beyond the task at hand. 
I know firsthand that the elements of the EDA team, Elliott Realtors and Ocampa Esther Realtors, has uh, contributed greatly to the community and its interests. They've sponsored sports teams that contribute to the development of our youth. Um, Ocampa Esther provided engineering plans for the helipad at Solano, Sutter Solano uh, Hospital uh, without cost to the hospital. They've done an unquestionable and undaunted reputation within this community as to a commitment beyond just receiving a contract. Uh, Ida deserves your support for this pr proposed project. And it's like buying a car. Just think of it as buying like a car. You know, you, you have your standard equipment and you have your must-haves. And then you look for your options, okay, that would likes. And you look at the team that you've got with Ida, um, and they meet the cr criteria set forth by the city of Vallejo in its mission statement. Thank you. Thank you. All right, this, <clears throat> excuse me, at this time we'll have a five-minute rebuttal on each side. I'll call on the principals to give that rebuttal. The first rebuttal will be by Tim Bowe, five minutes, and then Dave Blau, five minutes. Thank you. I'd like to uh, thank by, start by uh, acknowledging Mr. Blau. I'm, I'm glad that after 20 years, he's finally met uh, an opponent that he considers to be really worthy because he stated that um, this is the, the toughest opposition that he's had, and I think it's about time. Uh, I've talked with a lot of people in the local community, and they tell me that they see these contracts come and go, and they don't feel like they really truly get representation. And I felt this way on this particular contract. I can assure you that if the issues which I bring out in my letter, um, if I couldn't back them up with evidence, I wouldn't be here tonight. But I'd also like to point out the fact that I mentioned in my letter, I, I said that Ocampa Esta, or that um, Ida was ragging the coattails of a local firm. I said that, that they were masquerading as a local team. Well, I think that they did a, a much better job of proving that point tonight than, than I ever could. I counted the speakers, and of all the speakers you heard, only three of them were here directly to endorse Ida. They were all here to talk about Ocampa Esta. And I, I think it's so unfortunate that we, as a local community-based organization, should be put into a, t into a position where we are more or less pitted against a firm that we have no beef with. We have a lot of respect for El Camp Esta. When they um, solicited their services to us and wanted to be on our team, we gave them a, a great deal of consideration, and we ranked them number two. The reason that we went with Tower Engineering, they're only 10 miles up the road, and we had more experience in working with them, and the RFP stressed the importance of working relations. Ida doesn't have any working relations with Ocampa Esta. They went, as one of the uh, representatives from Ocampa Esta mentioned, they went down and visited their office the day before the interview, the day before the interview, not before they submitted their response to the RFP. They were going to continue to use the same team that they've been out there, and yet they claim that they're making this great commitment to the community. What they've done is they've realized after the date of filing the proposal that they'd better get some local representation on their team fast, and they went ahead and, and did just that. Now, if you acknowledge them, if you allow that to happen and you don't take issue, everybody's watching. The whole business community is going to know that at the 11th hour, a firm that's not a part of the community can, can go out and find a local firm that may be qualified but is going to help them to prop up their team and make them more politically acceptable. And that is, in fact, what we're seeing here tonight. We have stated that we have nothing but respect for Ocampa Esta. We rated them number two. We went with another team simply, or another firm simply because we had more experience in working with them, and that's what the RFP stated. To have done otherwise would have been a deviation from the RFP. Um, our mechanical engineer is not here tonight, but he was here on the 31st, and he stood up and said, we'll step down. You know, I think that Bo is the firm that it ought to go with, and we don't have a, a problem with, with relinquishing our position. He, he publicly stated that, if you go back and listen to the tapes. If he would have been here tonight, he would have said it again. He said he'd be more than happy to work with Ocampa Esta. If you're going to allow them to shuffle the teams, if you're really looking for good local representation, then why don't you make us the same offer that Ida made to us? They called me into a meeting at the city manager's office and said, okay, uh, Jim, you, you dump your team and we'll give you a place on our team. 
but they had 20% local representation, 20% of the fees going back to the local community, and I declined on that basis. Why don't you make us the same offer? Tell us that we can shuffle our team around and add in according, why don't we take the EDOF team and pick who we want and put them on our team and then come back and see if that doesn't work better. I can assure you, you would get by far the team that everybody would be the most supportive of. So you've given, given them that opportunity, why don't you give it to us? We're the ones that belong on that island. We're the ones that are ready to make the real commitment to the community. We're not out skating around the state looking for reuse work. We don't promote ourselves as the reuse firm. I admit we may have a learning curve that they don't have because we haven't been out there for the last year, but we're a very good firm. You check our qualifications, you talk to our references, and they'll tell you that we deliver. And that's what we're looking for is the opportunity to deliver. And we have more levels of, of motivation on this than they could possibly dream of. So don't cut the local firms out of it. If you're going to be flexible and if you're going to work, let's work something out. I'm amenable to it. Thank you. Mr. Blau. I think we need a definition for local. Um, we've heard local defined as synonymous with the county, with the city, and so on. And uh, I, I'm, I think it's a serious question. Um, I just want to clear up a couple things and I'll be brief. Number one, uh, our proposal, just so that everyone is clear on this, 20% of the initial task is targeted for Ocampo Este. 5% uh, to Bill Elliott on the appraisal work, and 15% of the work would be done by Juanito from Moffat and Nickel. That's 40%. We think that we have the right balance of local, our definition of local participation with the know-how to do this type of work. We're dealing with very special building types. Many do not have typical standard codes. We, it requires very specialized skills, and we have those skills. I've only had the time to respond to a partial list of the accusations against us in Mr. Uh, uh, Bo's two letters, and I'm not even going to try to go through any more. We, respe we respect your selection process and we would hope you would abide by the, the technical review panel that you empowered to make a recommendation to you. Thanks. <clears throat> Excuse me. That concludes the uh, public portion of the meeting. We'll now take the matter into the um, hands of the council. Uh, at this point, um, it would be appropriate if there, and to order to have something on the, um, on the dais for us to debate, um, we have had extensive debate, as all, you, all of you are aware. I want, to, I want to offer the gavel in a moment to the vice mayor, and I will offer the resolution to award this contract to EDAW. Um, in doing that, um, I'm doing it in, in, in with only one motive in mind, and that is to, to give the contract to the firm, which I believe um, will do the best job for the people of the city of Vallejo. The, um, debate that's gone on about who's more local it does defy definition. It does defy a, um, any attempt this council has made in the past to come up with something that would approach um, a reliable definition. I think all we have to do is, is try to reach a decision that's fair, um, that we think is reasonable, and that um, will be to the benefit of the people of the city. Anything else is... Um, is beyond our responsibility. And so I offer that resolution with that spirit. You have the resolution, Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the resolution has been offered. Thank you. Thank you. All right, at this, <coughs> excuse me, at this time we'll have a five minute rebuttal on each side. I'll call on the principals to give that rebuttal. The first rebuttal will be by Tim Bow, five minutes, and then Dave Blau, five minutes. Thank you. I'd like to uh, thank by, start by uh, acknowledging Mr. Blau. I'm, I'm glad that after 20 years, he's finally met uh, an opponent that he considers to be really worthy because he stated that um, this is the, the toughest opposition that he's had, and I think it's about time. 
Uh, I've talked with a lot of people in the local community and they tell me that they see these contracts come and go and they don't feel like they really truly get representation. And I felt this way on this particular contract. I can assure you that if the issues which I bring out in my letter, um, if I couldn't back them up with evidence, I wouldn't be here tonight. But I'd also like to point out the fact that I mentioned in my letter, I, I said that Ocampa Esta, or that um, Ida was ragging the coattails of a local firm. I said that, that they were masquerading as a local team. Well, I think that they did a, a much better job of proving that point tonight than, than I ever could. I counted the speakers, and of all the speakers you heard, only three of them were here directly to endorse Ida. They were all here to talk about Ocampa Esta. And I, I think it's so unfortunate that we, as a local community-based organization, should be put into a, t into a position where we are more or less pitted against a firm that we have no beef with. We have a lot of respect for Ocampa Esta. When they um, solicited their services to us and wanted to be on our team, we gave them a, a great deal of consideration and we ranked them number two. The reason that we went with Tower Engineering, they're only 10 miles up the road, and we had more experience in working with them, and the RFP stressed the importance of working relations. EDA doesn't have any working relations with Ocampa Esta. They went, as one of the uh, representatives from Ocampa Esta mentioned, they went down and visited their office the day before the interview, the day before the interview, not before they submitted their response to the RFP. They were going to continue to use the same team that they've been out there, and yet they claim that they're making this great commitment to the community. What they've done is they've realized after the date of filing the proposal that they'd better get some local representation on their team fast, and they went ahead and, and did just that. Now, if you acknowledge them, if you allow that to happen and you don't take issue, everybody's watching. The whole business community is going to know that at the 11th hour, a firm that's not a part of the community can, can go out and find a local firm that may be qualified but is going to help them to prop up their team and make them more politically acceptable. And that is, in fact, what we're seeing here tonight. We have stated that we have nothing but respect for Ocampa Esta. We rated them number two. We went with another team simply, or another firm simply because we had more experience in working with them, and that's what the RFP stated. To have done otherwise would have been a deviation from the RFP. Um, our mechanical engineer is not here tonight, but he was here on the 31st, and he stood up and said, we'll step down. You know, I think that Bo is the firm that it ought to go with, and we don't have a, a problem with, with relinquishing our position. He, he publicly stated that if you go back and listen to the tapes. If he would have been here tonight, he would have said it again. He said he'd be more than happy to work with Ocampa Esta. If you're going to allow them to shuffle the teams, if you're really looking for good local representation, then why don't you make us the same offer that EDAW made to us? They called me into a meeting at the city manager's office and said, okay, uh, Tim, you, you dump your team and we'll give you a place on our team. But they had 20% local representation, 20% of the fees going back to the local community, and I declined on that basis. Why don't you make us the same offer? Tell us that we can shuffle our team around and add in according, why don't we take the EDA team and pick who we want and put them on our team and then come back and see if that doesn't work better. I can assure you, you would get by far the team that everybody would be the most supportive of. So you've given, given them that opportunity, why don't you give it to us? We're the ones that belong on that island. We're the ones that are ready to make the real commitment to the community. We're not out skating around the state looking for reuse work. We don't promote ourselves as the reuse firm. I admit we may have a learning curve that they don't have because we haven't been out there for the last year, but we're a very good firm. You check our qualifications, you talk to our references, and they'll tell you that we deliver. And that's what we're looking for, is the opportunity to deliver. And we have more levels of, of motivation on this than they could possibly dream of. So don't cut the local firms out of it. If you're going to be flexible and if you're going to work, let's work something out. I'm amenable to it. Thank you. Mr. Blau. I think we need a definition for local. Um, we've heard local defined as synonymous with the county, with the city, and so on. And I, I, I'm, I think it's a serious question. Um, I just want to clear up a couple things, and I'll be brief. Number one, 
uh, our proposal, just so that everyone is clear on this, 20% of the initial task is targeted for Ocampo Este. 5% uh, to Bill Elliott on the appraisal work, and 15% of the work would be done by Juanito from Moffat and Nickel. That's 40%. We think that we have the right balance of local, our definition of local participation with the know-how to do this type of work. We're dealing with very special building types. Many do not have typical standard codes. We, it requires very specialized skills, and we have those skills. I've only had the time to respond to a partial list of the accusations against us in Mr. Uh, uh, Bo's two letters, and I'm not even going to try to go through any more. We respect, we respect your selection process, and we would hope you would abide by the, the technical review panel that you empowered to make a recommendation to you. Thanks. That concludes the uh, public portion of the meeting. We'll now take the matter into the um, hands of the council. Uh, at this point, um, it would be appropriate if there, and to order to have something on the um, on the dais for us to debate. Um, we have had extensive debate, as all you all of you are aware. I want to I want to offer the gavel in a moment to the vice mayor, and I will offer the resolution to award this contract to EDA. Um, in doing that. Um, I'm doing it in, in, in with only one motive in mind, and that is to, to give the contract to the firm which I believe um, will do the best job for the people of the city of Vallejo. The um, debate that's gone on about who's more local does defy definition. It does defy a, um, any attempt this council has made in the past to come up with something that would approach um, a reliable definition. I think all we have to do is, is try to reach a decision that's fair, um, that we think is reasonable, and that um, will be to the benefit of the people of the city. Anything else is, um, is beyond our responsibility. And so I offer that resolution with that spirit. You have the resolution, Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the resolution has been offered by the Mayor. Are there any comments from uh, Council? Uh, Councilmember Pacho. Yes, thank you, uh, Vice Mayor Hicks. My perception is my reality. And it goes for anyone looking at this picture that we're looking at right now. Um, I do not like the manner in which this process has been handled. I'm going to be very frank. I have to say that. If I didn't say it, I wouldn't feel good when I go home tonight. And I think everyone here needs to, to realize that there was a panel of four persons, actually maybe there have been five persons that were put together. The fifth person dropped out for some emergency and could not show up. The four persons that were left on that panel voted and they split their vote. Two with Ida and two with Bo. That to me tells me that they're all qualified. And that's not the issue. Ocampa Esta is qualified. My definition of local is Solano, Napa County, because that is what Maryland represented over the years. And for us to sit here and debate the issue of who's not qualified and who is qualified is not the issue to me. To me, I think it would have been good for the city to put together a team. And I agree with Mr. Bow that they're going to have a learning curve if they get this award. But it's time that we take the risk to combine the team and form a team that is truly local. And I'm going to ask a few questions here and uh, of Ocampa Esta, if they would be willing to join the Bo team if Bo got it. That's one question. It's important to me. Uh, and I, I think that the city attorney made a few comments at the very beginning of this about the bidding process. No, I'm talking now. I'm talking now, but I want, I, want, I want those questions answered. I want to know if Ocampa Esta will join the Bow team. That's important to me. I don't think this city council should have been put in this position. That's the way I feel. I think that the city 
staff should have provided us with the RFP and the response to the RFP. There's some things in here that are very important to me, and when I saw them, I said, well, now, wait a minute. There's, and it's the price per square foot. Very important. If I had known that last week, we may have not have been here today. But to exclude that from the packet, to me, was unfair. It should have been here. But when you look at the overall price per square foot of EDA as compared to Bo, EDA's overall price is 26 cents per square foot. Bo is 59 cents per square foot. But based on what the city attorney said at the beginning of this meeting about whether we could sit down and negotiate a price if they got the bid. Is that not right? John? I, I'm sorry, Mayor. I'm not sure what the question is. To the chair? Was, uh, to the chair, could I ask that of the city attorney? Yes, um, Mr. Powers. Yes, sir, but would you please repeat the question? I'm not sure if, what you're driving If Bo got at. the bid, could we renegotiate the price per square foot with them? Could it be changed from yes. what was what was submitted? Probably yes. I and mean, not I, I, I don't know. That's a factor that you can take into account in selecting the <coughs> excuse me the uh, consultant. But as I said at the beginning of the meeting, it cannot be the predominant factor. Um, uh, to me, there's a lot of latitude on on the negotiation of contracts with consultants and. Um, it's probably open to the um, city council. You have a lot of discretion as to how you want to handle it, as to whether you can ask a question of one of the subcontractors. Um, um, I'm not sure. I think that would be up to them if they wanted to respond to that. I would uh, like does to that help uh, answer yes, the question? Yes, it does. Okay. I would like to have a response to that question. Would Ocampo has to be willing to join Bo if, they, if Bo got the bid? That's important to me. You want to you want um, yes, the chair the company. Um, who's going to speak for Ocampo? Who is that? We we've heard um, lengthy deliberation on it, and so would you please keep your um, response simple? Yes or no. Uh, I'm Oscar Ocampo, and this is with regards to the. Uh, uh, if Bowie will be getting some work with this job, uh, what I have thought, you know, what I think is it will be very unprofessional for me to join their group. Because number one, we tried to join their group before the bidding process. And then during the last council meeting here, we were told that they took the Napa-based company other than our company, who is a Vallejo base. And we've been trying hard before the interview you know, to, to get in with their team, but we never got any response from them. Here is a company, Idao, which we contacted two days or three days before the interview. We have a lot of telephone conversation they even went to our office and we, we discussed things, what we can do for them and what their are experience. And I think it will be, at this time, it will be very unprofessional for our company to go to Bo for this particular project. But maybe if, if there will be some project in the future, we are really very open to them. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, uh, Councilman Pascho, you also want the same response from Esther? Same, same company. Same company. Okay. And I, I, I assume he was speaking for both. Yeah, he's speaking for both, I assume. Yes. One question I would have a staff through the chair, Mr. Graham. Uh, for example, the St. Uh, Peter's Chapel out there, in Bo's bid, they proposed an 85 cents per square foot for St. Peter's Chapel. What, how many square feet are in that chapel? Mr. Graham? I'm, I'm looking to the, the staff, uh, Mr. Council Member. I'm trying to judge it. It's probably uh, not quite as large as this room, uh, unless they have a number. Yeah, much smaller half of that, half of the size of this room. Uh, 
So perhaps you're, you're uh, talking about 40 feet wide and maybe 60 or 70 feet long, uh, 3,000. You're talking about almost two and a half times as, as much to survey that building between the two, the two bids. Uh, yes. This was important information and should have been included in our packet two weeks ago. Let me explain that we avoided, as we do with all of these, uh, and as you heard, and I think Mr. Ocampo said it very clearly, there are certain unprofessional actions. One is shopping a bid, for example, or taking somebody else's bid at the last minute. Uh, another one is giving an estimate, uh, which is not intended to be absolute, but an estimate to get us into the ballpark so that, as the city attorney explained, after we've got a rough set of numbers, we can then negotiate down from that number. And that was the uh, dilemma we were in. We did not want to prejudice you toward either one of those organizations because price cannot be the sole uh, criteria when you're dealing with a professional group. And by professional, you've heard it defined, architects, engineers, uh, attorneys. Uh, you have some latitude to say, look, you're, we like you, but your price is a little bit, little bit high. Let's talk about bringing it down a little bit if you can. Uh, and so that's why we avoided it until it got to be a real bone of contention. Well, it would have been good. You could have put that in there as a report to us as confidential and said, these are the prices. Be aware of this. Two weeks ago. And I could have, been, I could have made a more professional decision with regard to this. That's what I am, the point I am trying to make at this time with regard to these, this year. Another point that, that's important is the time frame in which this would be committed completed. Uh, one is 18 weeks on the outside and the other is 22 weeks on, on the outside. That's important. Would have been good to, to have known that uh, for me to make a credible decision in this process. But now we're two weeks down the road and, and have gone through some gnashing of teeth. And, um, but I have got to again stress the importance of of massaging our local business people as much as we can to include them in, at every opportunity in this conversion process. I think it's very important. And for us to, to be up here debating this issue, it, to some extent, is counterproductive. Yet on the other hand, it, it, it is probably, probably um, good for the process. We'll learn from this. This is an experience. I know I learned one thing. I will, since it not, was not in the packet, Next time, I will call and ask for it before the meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Pacho. Uh, Councilmember Exline. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, I agree with Mr. Patchell. Sometimes when things are equal and they look equally qualified, one of the things that is important to have these RFPs and look at the whole package. And I, too, was very interested, as Mr. Patchell was, in the expense. So I contacted immediately the Economic Development Office last Friday and came down and visited them on Friday and had them run various figures for me. Because when I looked at these two uh, proposals, I noticed that they were asked, both firms were asked to estimate the cost for industrial buildings, office, residential, institutional, recreational, and commercial. Now, uh, EDAW did list various prices for each category, if you notice. Bo um, did some, estimated some categories, but they didn't estimate the cost for residential or recreational. So it became a problem uh, for the economic development department to put these figures together and come out with an average. But we attempted to do this, multiplying it by the square foot. And then what I did, and of course I confounded Mr. Siegelware, I said subtract 5% from uh, the local, which is Bo, because Bo can't call, you know, contends that he's local. So, but anyhow, if there were these, first of all, these nine buildings, uh, Bo was $322,219. Then, if you subtract 5%, 
if we gave them the local preference, that would be $16,111. That would still make a difference between Bo and EDAW. EDAW would still be $49,000 less. All right. Then I took the whole thing, not I, but let's put it, Mr. Hollingsworth and Mr. Siegel helped me run all that stuff out. If you did all of Mirror Island in the square footage, uh, according to Bo's figures, and I hope the team did this correctly, Bo, because I'm not in on these calculations as they are, uh, they added it up to 4,264,313. But EDAW would be 1,680,313. And then you take your 5% uh, off and still there is about a difference of $2 million. So Bo, uh, EDAW is considerably for the for the first nine buildings, it would be only $49, $49,000 less. But if you took the whole project, if we did everything on your island, it'd be $2 million less. So in doing that, then that determined to me that this one team was going to cost considerably less, had a lot more experience on Mira Island, was using not local, but a Vallejo team, Vallejo, and the Vallejo team is a minority-based team, which also uh, fits one of our goals and objectives of Vallejo, and even giving Bo the 5%, would still be doing, uh, uh, EDAW by far would win, so that is where I'm coming from. I also talk to uh, Mr. Ocampa on the telephone, as well as Mr. Bo. I'm trying to get all the facts from everyone. And I really put Mr. Ocampa through the third degree when I talked to him. I said, uh, he told me that he went to the interview and tour of Mirror Island uh, in December when all the architects took the tour. And he said, and I want to bow to Mr. Ocampa for being a tip-top businessman. He said, I got the list of every architect there, and I telephoned and contacted every single person on that list and asked them to interview me. And so that is the way, I think if all Vallejo businessmen went after business that way, maybe some of our Vallejo business would do better. Because he went and he said he contacted even Mr. Bo's team a second time, but he never received an answer. Now, that is what he told me. I don't know that it's a fact, but I asked Mr. O'Camp for that several times. The way that I did when I used to teach school and question a student, I, wondered, I didn't ask him once. I asked him several times, and he gave me that answer. So with that answer that... Bo had the opportunity of hiring a local minority team and then would go to Napa. That was also, that also conditioned my decision that I will support EDAW. But of course, the money also, money counts with me. And I have to tell you that when people are equally qualified and the, the amount of money is that much, that also is a tremendous factor. And I do want to thank the staff, our economic development staff, for the hard work they did for me that day when I said, please run these figures for me because I want to come to a good decision. So thank you very much. We have a very fine staff, and I want to thank you for cooperating with me when I asked for information. Thank you, Council Member Exline. Uh, Council Member Villanueva. Thank you, Vice Mayor Hicks. Like uh, Council Member Patchell, I, I don't have this information when I <coughs> originally offered the resolution <coughs> of awarding the contract with Ido and uh, the other team, the Ido team. Uh, I should have 
gotten this information last week, and therefore my, my argument could have, been, could have been stronger, and probably I could have convinced uh, at least additional council member and have this, this issue not delayed by another two months, two weeks, which is equivalent in engineering terms, another a month or a month and a half. Actually, uh, to give you a bird's eye view of the differences in the cost estimate as expounded by Council Member X line, in the commercial and recreational category, the building survey unit cost offered by uh, the Bow Company is 75 cents per square, square foot. The Edo and staff and uh, partnership is 30 cents. You can see the difference, 30 cents versus 75 cents. In terms of the historical uh, classification, the Edo is uh, bidding 28 cents per square foot. Bow is uh, bidding 85 cents. So you can see already in the costing itself that Edo is more effective and probably more efficient in their costing process. Another reason why I could have gotten this information earlier and I could have convinced at least one council member during that time is, I think the teaming of the Vallejo-based businesses like Ocampo Esta and Elliot, Bill Elliot Realty with Ida is a long-term positive implication for Vallejo businesses. Reason for that is, I'll give you an example. Ocampo Esta's gross revenue is not coming from Vallejo. They are coming from outside of Vallejo. They don't have any job from within Vallejo but they are already uh, producing revenue for us because their payroll are given to Vallejo ones. And when these payroll taxes, payroll taxes are paid to us also, or the payroll itself for buying groceries in here, it gives us already revenue. So Ocampo Esta, as a local-based, Vallejo-based business, is already a revenue generator here in the city of Vallejo. And if they are teamed with Idao, they will probably be going also beyond Mare Island. They can be also be going to this next sets of be, be, uh, base closure uh, list that are coming. And probably be, with the experience they will have with Ida, they can be an, not only international, but probably not only national or, or local base, but they will be nationally known, which is a company in Vallejo. And therefore, Vallejo will be also be given some kind of uh, additional uh, positive image in the business world. And one more impact that this will result is, this is the best attraction to businesses to locate their business here in Vallejo. If they see that we are giving some kind of participation in the Vallejo-based business, then all other businesses will try to be based here in Vallejo because the city council and the city staff recommends participation of Vallejo-based businesses. That is the reason why I am recommending this to be approved last, uh, last uh, two weeks ago. That is the best attraction that we can make in the business world, that here in Vallejo, the city council, the city staff, let the Vallejo businesses participate, and they are given preference in this city. I'm, I'm supporting your resolution again, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councilmember Villanueva. Uh, Councilmember Bashi. Yeah, thank you very, for, thank you very much, uh, Vice Mayor. I think uh, um, much has been said here, and I think I agree with all that has been indicated. I too am, am disappointed in the process, the information that uh, that we got, or lack of information. Uh, I certainly feel that we should have been provided more input. Uh, more information on the comparison of the of the two uh, proposals. Cost certainly is just one factor, but it, as we found out uh, when we got the information and material, there was a significant difference in the costs of these of these two proposals. Even though these are federal funds, uh, they're still dollars. They're still ta still taxpayer dollars, and we should be concerned about them. Um, and as we see now, the federal funds are beginning to dry up, and it may be that uh, it will become a significant factor on how much we're going to be able to get done uh, by looking at the costs of the services that are being provided. Uh, you know, the issue on local is one that is difficult for us sitting up here. I think we do recognize the, the impact that Mare Island has on the, the region, the Vallejo-Napa-Solana County area. 
and we do want to try to include as much as we can uh, businesses uh, from those various areas and, and work that's going to take place in and around this community as well as, as Mare Island. And I think we demonstrated that two weeks ago when we, when we asked that the parties get together and attempt to come together to provide a team that could do the work, but it also expand the amount and of, of local involvement in the project. This council sincerely wanted to see that come about. Unfortunately, uh, it didn't. Um, and so I also want to commend uh, uh, Oscar for his response to the question. Uh, that was a very professional response and, and uh, a very class, class act. And I think it just goes to show uh, the type of organization you have here. And all of us in Vallejo are very proud that you have uh, located in Vallejo and uh, we certainly uh, are very proud that you're a part of our community. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Bashi. Uh, Councilmember Patchell. Yes, thank you, Vice Mayor Hicks. I think it's time now for healing. We've gone through a process that all of us have not liked. Now it's time to heal. I'm going to support the mayor's resolution because of the additional information that I got in my packet last week. And if I'd had that two weeks ago, my decision might have been di different at that time. I think that's important. But now it's time to heal and to move forward. It's too important to this community and the conversion of Mare Island for us to bicker. And I would hope that EDA would not hold it against Bo in the infighting that has gone on over this issue against them in some future way if they could be included in some of the future projects. I think that would be important. So it's time to heal. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Pacho. Um, I, th I think because of the uh, experience that EDAL has had with uh, Mare Island and with our staff and with City Hall, uh, and because we are uh, living in bad economic times, um, we don't have very much time to, to experiment with new, fa with new factors or new elements. I think because of the experience factor that EDAL bring to the table, it's going to allow some expediency, it's going to allow some efficiency. And, and because of the relationship that EDAL has established with our local business folk, I'm going to support your resolution, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'll call for the, for the vote. I just want to ask one question. Uh, uh, Council Member Higgins. I'd like to ask the city manager that at some point in the future that you could put together a paper, a definitional paper, as to what the word local means so that when this comes up again, we, we have some real definition. And as far as the 5% preference is concerned, those of us that were in the council when the Oliver De Silva gelati issue came up at a study session pertaining to who was going to do the roadway by Columbus, uh, the golf course, local under the charter means living in, no, excuse me, an office in Vallejo, situated in Vallejo, not Benicia, not Fairfield, not Vacaville, our 5% preferences in Vallejo, an office by that business. So De Silva got the contract, not Gelati, even though Gelati had a trailer. And some of us have experienced that. But would you please bring us back some information, and, and maybe we could even have a study session so that this council, as we get on with the reuse issue at Maryland Little Shipyard, because there's going to be a lot of companies that would come into the city of Vallejo that will not be from Vallejo. They may be regional, they may even be international, so that when we talk local, we can talk with them and negotiate with them as to not necessarily percentage of local people or regional people, but how we can work with them if they come from an international basis uh, or the Pan Pacific companies that may be looking at Mare Island, and how we can participate with them uh, uh, objectively as to the definition of local and how they can work with us to hire local people if we do decide to hire some out of state or out of country companies that might want to locate in that piece of property or work over there. I think it's real important, Mr. Graham, that you bring that back to us in the near future. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Higgins, uh, Council Member Higgins. Uh, Council Member X Line. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. I would like to also ask the city manager 
uh, about including um, at the same time. And I do want to also thank our city attorney, John Powers, because that was the excellent presentation you made during your report on the request that I had made to uh, define the difference between a closed bid and an RFP. And I would like you to go over that again and have a written report. And I would like to recommend that when people do have RFPs, that you send out those definitions to them. Because I think there was a lot of misunderstanding, a lot of hard feelings were, there were a lot of hard feelings in this uh, incident because I think there were a lot of misinterpretations as to what is an RFP. There isn't this business when the clock ticks that you say, okay, nobody can put in a bid or change anything on any piece of paper. You do that on a construction bid, like when it's due like at two o'clock, it's when the clock ticks at the Vallejo Sanitation and Flood District, we had a contest of when the clock ticked, when did a bid close? When it was uh, like for two o'clock, the bid was to close, was it 1.59? And when the clock went to two, did that close the bid? Or did it close the bid when it went from two o'clock to 2.01? You can't imagine that that was what we went through about a year ago on the Vallejo Sanitation and Flood District. But that, no, but I'm just saying, and so, so some people do not understand the tenseness that is created, but that was a closed bid situation. This thing was not a closed bid, as our city attorney stated. It's an RFP that allows deviations. And I really think that if you would write up your opinion and this would be handed to people, hopefully, hopefully it would avert a lot of these misunderstandings. So I would appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Council Member Exline. Um, before calling for the vote, I'd just like to re reiterate a point that I made um, uh, the last time this item was before us, and that is, uh, it's not clear to me what the definition of a minority is. But uh, this city is not going anywhere, and there's going to be more jobs available. There are going to be other contracts available. And I'd just like to say to those firms that um, if, for whatever minority is, I certainly hope that you have them in place next time you come before the city. Thank you. I call for the vote. Unanimous. You have the gavel, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll move on to the next item, which is the um, item 13C. 14. Oh, 14, sorry. Appointments to boards, commissions, and committees. We have appointments <laughs> to the Architectural Heritage and Landmarks Commission. All right, we have um, tonight uh, interviewed several. Yeah. We'll take a two minute recess. Stay in place. Okay, the council is going to go on with the meeting. We're on um, item 
What are we 14A. on? 14A. 14A. And that's appointments to boards, commissions, and committees. We have appointments to the Architectural Heritage and Landmarks Commission. The council has uh, interviewed several persons tonight for appointment to the Architectural Heritage and Landmarks Commission. I will take the prerogative of the chair and nominate for the at-large position. We have two at-large positions. I will nominate the incumbent, Ali Mahalatinia. I will also nominate the incumbent, Larry Holzer, for reappointment to the uh, representing, pardon me, the Architectural Heritage District, and Winston Shady, the incumbent representing the St. Vincent's uh, District. We do have two um, possible um, uh, appointments in the at-large district, and so we need at least one more um, nomination. Do we have any other nominations? Please call them in seniority. Councilmember Bashi. Uh, Barbara Gelfand. Councilmember Higgins. No nominations. Councilmember Exline. No nominations. Councilmember Villanueva. No nomination. Councilmember Hicks. No nomination. Councilmember Patchell. No nomination. Mayor Tintilly. Oh, I made mine already. Um, Mr. Bashi. Yes, Mr. Uh, Mayor, I'll offer resolution appointing uh, Winston Shady as the St. Vincent's uh, area representative, Larry Holzer as the architectural heritage uh, representative, and Ali Malhalatina and Barbara Gelfand as the at-large members uh, to the Architectural Heritage Landmark Commission. All right, please vote. Unanimous. Is um, item 15? Community forum continued. Is, is there anyone who wishes to address the community forum that did not have addressed it earlier session? Okay. Mr. Mayor, may I say a few words? Uh, I had run out, run out of time on my earlier. Well, um, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, realize that this is highly irregular. <laughs> Well, <laughs> but go ahead. Thank you. I would I would say that the looking at the audience, the the meeting is just about to conclude. <clears throat> for them, for us.